guys, Laura here from Hedgehog Homestead. Yesterday we um, made a bunch of spaghetti sauce uh, from tomatoes we grew in our garden. Um, so this is the first time I've ever made uh, spaghetti sauce. Um, I started with the ball recipe, but then my husband came along and added his own little finesse to it. So I won't leave you the recipe for this but I will show you how to can it. And we're gonna start with warm sauce. I'm reheating this because I did the process of getting it all done uh, yesterday. And so now we're just gonna get out our canning uh, supplies. Um, I already have my, my grabbers for my jars. Um, and I'm gonna lay out a towel to put the hot jars on. Um, as soon as that's heated up, which it's pretty much almost there, I have hot jars in my dishwasher. I'll just get a towel out to lay it on the counter. Um, and we will get this going. So I'm gonna go get, I'm gonna get a couple hot jars out here. Two at a time. <laughs> my glasses are all steamed up. And we're gonna grab Okay, so I have my handy dandy funnel there. Element. Now this is gonna be pressure cooked, guys. Um, pressure cooked. I have my uh, two inches of water there, or an inch and a half. So, Let's remember guys, you want a hot can, hot jars, um, hot food, hot jars, hot canner. And so um, we are pressure canning this today and this will be pressure canned for 70 minutes at 10 pounds of pressure. Um, make sure you look up those uh, rules for your area because the um, Altitude is, that you're at will determine how much pressure. Um, you always want to start at 10 pounds um, with this. And so I'm pretty low here, like at 300 feet. So we only need 10 pounds of pressure. If we're above a thousand feet, then we need it higher. So we're getting this in our jar. I'm gonna bring you guys closer to the jar. And we're going to do an inch of headspace. I need to order one of those debubblers. Um, I'm just going to use a knife, but I know that an inch of headspace is right below this rim. Um, please get a debubbler with a measure um, thing on the one side if you're new to canning to make sure you know what a, an inch of headspace looks like and measure each jar. Because in, in, in a lot of uh, recipes, it makes a big difference. Okay, and just a little vinegar there. A little napkin so I have something to clean off the rim with. Okay, and there almost an inch of headspace. There's our inch. And that's what that looks like. I will debubble it a minute. Um, chopsticks are great for this. Um, And then we get our, there we go, we're still working on this one. We wipe off our rim with our vinegar water. And then put a clean ring and a clean lid on top. Finger tight. and then we put it in our canner.
Now make sure you have the rack. You have the rack on the bottom of your canner, okay guys? Because that's important so it doesn't break. Okay. Another jar. place to put my and see on the rim there I got a little bit of um, of the juices I'm gonna wipe that off with my vinegar um, towel and I would not use just water or even soapy vinegar water because this is a beef um, this has um, pork and beef in it um, so it's got a pork sausage and uh, beef in it so um, because it is a meat sauce that I did. And that's why we have to pressure cook it for 70 minutes. Okay. Now my fingers are very um, tough because I've been canning for a long time and I play guitar. So I can touch the jars like that. Um, okay, and another jar. Now I put big chunks of carrots in here. So if your recipe call, calls for carrots in it, in your spaghetti sauce, what that means is that um, you just put a big chunk of carrot in there and that helps keep it from getting bitter. Um, you don't put the carrots in your sauce. <laughs> jar. And we just do bubble that. Clean off the rim with our vinegar water. Put on our clean ring and lid. Make sure it's centered on there good. Finger tight, and then in the canner. Do your best not to hit the jars together because they can break. Sorry about that banging, we have a little construction noise. It's amazing to me how many tomatoes it actually makes. It makes it takes to make a, a good amount of sauce. Um, sauce. Okay. We have our inch. Of, first, I'm gonna debubble it. There we go. Wipe off the rim with our vinegar water. Clean lid and ring. Finger tight. And then in the can. And the process goes on. Get our other 
longer. bubble wipe off our rim put a clean lid on finger tight and then the canner bubble, clean off the rim with vinegar water, one spot on the side, put a clean lid on it, finger tight, and in the canner. One more in there, so we might have to do a second batch. I could leave you guys the recipe for the ball canning book, but I don't, there's probably copyrights on that. So if you have the ball canning book, um, you can know the basic recipe. We added extra spices, a little touch of our own. Um, my husband's a good cook, so we let him do that. Um, as long as it follows the basic guidelines, so we're a little bit of a rebel. And off we go in the canner. Spaghetti sauce left. Okay, this is my Presto canner. Every canner is a little bit different. For look, so look for the directions on, on this side and top on this side. And so when it comes up to pressure, this little valve will start to steam. Once it's steaming at a regular place, we're going to Pace, we're going to put on a timer for 10 minutes and then we add our weight on. 
So we will see you back when it starts steaming and we'll put on our timer together. And I'll walk you through the process of uh, making this lovely sauce in our, our little canning weight here. I call it a wobbler. People call it different things in different areas of the nation. Um, 10 pounds of pressure. So this is five pounds without any extra weights on it. If I want it at 10 pounds, I add one weight. If I want it at 15 pounds, I add another weight. We only want 10 pounds of pressure today, so we're adding 10 pounds. That is starting to vent at a consistent rate now. So I'm gonna go ahead and put on a timer for 10 minutes. In 10 minutes, after 10 minutes, then I will put on my weight or wobbler or jiggler, whatever you wanna call it. So that's what we're doing next. So I'm watching my timer now for 10 minutes, guys. Two pounds of pressure. You wanna be a little bit careful doing this. You can see, because you can burn yourself. Oh. And there we go. Now, it's not at 10 pounds of pressure yet. When this starts waddling back and forth like a hula dancer, you know it's at pressure, at the right pressure. If it starts waddling too fast, you need to turn down your um, burner and <clears throat> you only turn it down a little increments at a time until it, it starts waddling like this. You just want a steady waddle, not like this, <laughs> not like this more like this, okay? So, just to give you a visual there. We'll see you back, um, I'll show you, we'll, we'll see you back when it starts to waddle and I'll show you what we're looking at. Okay guys, it's starting to waddle. It is above um, 10 pounds of pressure. I also have a gauge on mine over here. Um, not all pressure canners come with gauges. Um, so that's what the wobbler is doing. It, I'm just going to turn down the burner just a tad. because I don't want it getting much higher. Now, if this drops, if this drops to low, um, 10 pounds of pressure, you have to start all over again on your on your time. So we're gonna go ahead and add a, add a timer for 70 minutes now. And I'm just gonna watch this really closely for a little while. 70 minutes. Okay, we have our timer on. So it's getting a little high. It's not even wobbling that much. So we're going to turn down our burner just a little more. My burner, my um, stove kind of has a sweet spot of about just above a medium but I don't want to turn it down too fast because then it will dip below that 10 pounds of pressure and then come back up. So you don't want to do that. You just want to do small increments. I like to keep my um, temper, get temperature gauge right around 11 to 10 pounds, or 11 to uh, 12 pounds of pressure so that I can, I have some wiggle room to work with. It's okay if it's just a couple points above. Um, so, looks like we found our sweet spot right there. 
You can see how the wobbler is moving not too fast. Just drop just a little bit more. straight up and down. You never want to tilt the jar. You want to keep it straight the whole time. Thank you for watching and I hope you guys learned something. We're just waiting for that pop and you could hear it happening. Um, please like and subscribe and as always, God bless. Bye.